What's going on everyone? So today I have another special new release by a major designer brand that wasn't necessarily even released yet. Um, it's not on their website. It's on, not on the Macy's website or Sephora or Ulta yet. And so I went to my Macy's and I saw it and I picked it up. And then I did a little bit of a sneak peek on my live by YSL. This is YSL Y Eau de Parfum Intense. So I'm going to be doing my first impressions on that today. So without further ado, let's get it. All right, my great smelling dudes, welcome back to my channel. This is Randy, aka Fragrance Dude, back with another fragrance video. Before we get into it, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And if you like my content, follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Uh, so again, this isn't necessarily even released yet. I know a couple people said they found them in their Macy's, so I decided to make a trip out to mine like I do every Friday. And it's not on their website, it's not on Macy's website, at least at the point of making this video. Um, and it, it actually was just announced only four days ago, which usually fragrances, they take about a month. They go to Europe, then they come over here. And I know YSL is a little bit hit or miss when it comes to that. But today I'm going to be doing a review, which I wasn't even sure if I was going to be picking up this bottle because of the notes that kind of looked a little bit redundant. I'll also let you know that in this video. This is going to be a mashup between a first impression and a full review. I've worn it once. Um, but I also did test it twice, so I'll let you guys know pretty much what I got over that span, and then I will do a re full, full review in a week. Uh, so by YSL, this is YSL Y Eau de Parfum Intense, released here in 2023. The box is the same as all of the other YSLs. I got the 3.3 ounce one, and yes, it is 3.3 ounce. It's like 3.39 or whatever, and it's 100 milliliters, and it is an Eau de Parfum Intense. We'll get the bottle out here, which I already did have it out for my live. Again, I did a test on there. And it was um, honestly, based on the colors that they showed you online, it looked like it was more of like a teal and turquoise type color. But really, it's just a slightly green hue of the um, Eau de Parfum bottle. So, I mean, it looked cool online. It still is kind of cool. I do like the Y bottles, but um, yeah, pretty much that. I'm going to spray it onto my hand here. Let you guys know, even though I am wearing it today. And then I'm going to give you the note breakdown that there is different note breakdowns on different sites. I'm just going to give it to you based on what I know on the most legit site that I follow. And the top notes for YSL Y Eau de Parfum Intense are ginger, juniper berries, and bergamot. Mid notes are sage, geranium, and lavender. And the base notes are vetiver, patchouli, and cedar. I was going to break out the Eau de Parfum, the Le Parfum, the Eau de Toilette to kind of do a comparison, which I will do in my full review. But for this one, I kind of just wanted to do it on its own and let you guys know exactly what I get. So when you first spray it on, you automatically notice this is a Y fragrance, obviously. You get those aromatics, you get those blue tones, and then it automatically reminds you almost of a mixture of the Eau de Toilette and Eau de Parfum if it wasn't as sweet. That green apple is definitely taken out here. You can tell that right off the bat, it's taken out completely. Um, I heard somebody say that it was strikingly similar to the Le Parfum. I completely disagree with that. Uh, while this one opens, and when it does open, it does have that um, juniper berry in there, which gives it a little bit of a fruity sweetness off the top. That does dissipate quite quickly, as does the fragrance. Uh, so the fragrance does last on you for a decent amount of time. But as far as the performance, if we're doing an Eau de Parfum Intense, you would think that they would take the Eau de Parfum, not necessarily the DNA or like exactly, but something around that line and make it more intense than the Eau de Parfum that they already have, which is beast mode. That is a 10 plus hour fragrance, one that is going to fill up a room if you spray it four or five times. Everybody knows it's super versatile. Uh, it's sometimes so strong that it gives people a headache. This guy. Um, but this one, it is pretty much a YSL Y Eau de Parfum not so intense because off the opening, it does have a strikingly similar projection to like a mixture of the Eau de Toilette and Eau de Parfum where it's kind of like above average. It's not low like the Eau de Toilette and it's not high like the Eau de Parfum. It's right in the middle. 
and then it starts to creep down as the fragrance gets further and further into the fragrance. So you do get that bergamot, you do get that ginger, it gives a little bit of an effervescent pop. And I'm not going to tell you, I wanna kinda of remain neutral with this fragrance, just in case there are people out there that are excited about this or, or are not a full collector. I can tell you, if you're looking for a YSL fragrance, again, I don't feel for any person out there, whether you're a collector or a new person, that this is the one that you should buy. Um, so as you get into the mid, that sweetness from the, again, it's much less sweet than the original. Um, it's more than the Eau de Parfum. Uh, it doesn't have any of that really tonka bean feel to it or anything like that. It does almost have a little bit of a creaminess to it in the opening, but as you get into the mid, into the dry down, it's, that's where the juniper goes away, the bergamot goes away, that effervescent pop from the ginger goes away. Um, the ginger kind of becomes more of an undertoned nuance, but then you get those aromatic notes. You get the uh, clary sage, the geranium, what the Y is known for. And that is kind of the mid of the fragrance for about five to 10 minutes. So we're about 15 minutes into the fragrance now, okay? Um, and then at about 15 minutes, that is where it starts to get more woody. And it becomes more of a woody, aromatic, slightly earthy toned fragrance. And it's quite boring. I, I, I hate to say that. I was kind of um, texting a few of my subs that are my moderators and stuff and telling them kind of step by step as I was smelling the fragrance what it smelled like. And I said, oh, it's actually quite nice. I don't know what that person was talking about because there was a reviewer that was uh, trashing it. And I do have to say that person is kind of right because there is a... a, a a disconnect with this fragrance because you had the eau de toilette and then the eau de toilette intense which was why live which is phenomenal and it is kind of like a fruity bubblegummy sweet version of the y dna it's my second favorite in the line if not my favorite i love it then you have the eau de parfum and then they kind of did this and people were saying like myself this seems like it's going to be a mixture between the eau de toilette and the eau de parfum but it's a cash grab and that's what it is. It's an aromatic woody. So as you get further into the fragrance, it's aromatic, it's woody. There is really not much else going on in this fragrance. It is like a generic version of the Y DNA. I said this exact thing. So it's pretty much like if you get a YSL Y clone that does it well, but you can tell there is a quality difference but not, not much, just a slight quality difference. It's pretty much what you get here because clones always miss out on one or two notes, whether it's that apple or whatnot, and that's what they do here. It seems kind of like a generic version of the Y DNA. With that said, it smells nice. My wife likes it, I like it. It's something that you could wear, it's super versatile. It'll be able to be worn in any season. This is almost like a more masculine take on the Y DNA. If you just wanted to go with the aromatics and the woods from it and almost like a slight floral tinge underneath it, it also does have like almost like a muskiness underneath it. But overall, the fragrance just doesn't do much for me. I've smelled the Y DNA. I thought the Y DNA was getting a little bit redundant um, as far as going further with flankers. But YSL is known to have a lot of flankers in their lines. So overall, this fragrance, again, it opens up and it seems like it's going to be doing something. That juniper, that, uh, ber that bergamot, it has like a citrusy kind of fruity opening. And then it kind of just becomes a woody, aromatic, generic, basic version of the YSL Y DNA. Um, I hate to say that because I love the Y line, but, and I even told my wife, I said, I have the full line. It's one of my favorite lines, if not my favorite designer blue line. I just absolutely love the Y line, but I don't know if I even want to keep this bottle just because I want to give you a bit of a uh, performance and price here. So the price of this, the 3.3 ounce, is $158 after tax. 
The 2.0 ounce was $127. So just to give you an FYI, I also talked to a few uh, company heads of different fragrance companies, and they told me that there was going to be a 15 to 20% hike in fragrances, niche and designer alike, over the next like six months. And it seems like it's starting, it started with Burberry Hero, now it's going with YSL. Uh, once we get to, now we're going to go with the performance. Now we got the price out of the way. Performance of this, you get about seven to eight hours. I would say that's on the high end because after about 20 to 30 minutes, you can still notice it, but it is a very close to the skin scent. Um, I would say kind of around the lines of like Polo or... Uh, not Polo, the Ralph's Club Parfum, how it sits very close to the skin. Um, so after about 15 to 20 minutes, you can still smell it, but it's not nothing intense. I don't know why they call it YSL, YEDP intense. This is a complete miss in my opinion. It smells nice. It's just, I was expecting something more from the line that already produced. They had the EDT, which is one of my favorites for out of the shower, if not my favorite. The EDP, which gives me a headache. The uh, Eau Fraiche, which is a great lemonade, slushy type scent for the summer with that juniper, really nice. Then you have your Le Parfum, one of the best date night fragrances out there. And then you have the Live, which is your bubblegummy sweet fragrance. It's like they got better as they kept going. And then they brought this out and it's kind of just a cash grab. So I do want to say for everybody who said that, you're completely right. It's an aromatic, woody, kind of generic version of the Y line. It is a cash grab. And I'll let you guys know if that changes on me. But at this point in time, it's a sad day. I'm probably going to return it and wait until there's a 50% YSL sale. And then so I can finally get all the bottles in the line. And I kind of hope they stop here. Unless they decide to go with an elixir and change up the DNA like Dior did, I think they should stop with this one and just end it because it's a generic aromatic version. That's the best way to put it. There's nothing else to it. You don't need to talk much more about it. If that opening stuck, it might be a little bit better, but I don't like the dry down as much as the opening. It's kind of just a generic version. Let me know if you've tried it. I know a lot of you have and you felt the same way, but other than that, um, yeah, I'll be back with another video. Be on the lookout for the full review in about a week. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace out.